I'm gonna have to hire like an IT guy. <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm gonna get a quick sip of water, be right back in August. Started with you guys. Have some fun. All right, cool. I'm going to get going here. Um, just want to thank everybody um, that showed up today that uh, donated. I really appreciate it. Uh, I was going over and how I think about how I was going over and charging for classes. And I know some of these vid I know the videos are going to be out there. So what, I what I'm going to do for everybody is everybody that purchased the classes, I'm going to give you 25 minutes of, of my time, go over uh, whatever it is you guys want to go over. Uh, any questions that you had that you're stuck with, you got court cases, if you're in the middle of court or if you're in the middle of buying a house or in the middle of foreclosure, whatever it is you want to go over, you know, we'll set up a time frame, 20, 25, 30 minutes <clears throat> to go over whatever paperwork you want to go over. All right. With that being said, this ain't legal advice. It's going to be a consulting on financial advice. Tonight's class, class one, what we're going to go over is your birth certificate, what it is, how to authenticate it, why we're authenticating it. So this is pretty much, uh, you know, step one of pretty much taking back over your estate from the state. So... Laura, you're gonna have to mute your stuff. Are you mute yourself? I think I am. No, you're not muted. All right, hold on. Yeah, there you go. You get here to the cars. All right. Anyways, um, so yeah, what you basically happened in 1666 for the world, or based in England, was they set up the, you know, Sesta Key Trust. Because basically people were going out to uh, fighting wars and leaving their lands unattended and it was the farmlands were going to waste. Because originally we're all farmers. Originally. So we're all farmers. That's how you're supposed to, you know, the soil you walk on is supposed to be the best soil for when you're growing. Anyways, so your birth certificate, we're going to go over what it is. We're going to authenticate it. I'm going to go over what to say to the clerks. Um, if you mail it in, how to mail it in, what to say in certain letters, because I always hand write a letter of intent with everything that I mail out. Um, so this first, and all the files that I go over, we're gonna, I'm gonna email them all to you too, so you're gonna have all of them to reread over, because I'm gonna go over this first one kind of briefly. It's not that important. It kind of gives you like a small foundation of the birth certificate and stuff. But I have a few other reads that go into the birth certificate and what it is and like UCC Article 7 and documents of title and how it's a warehouse receipt, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get into it. All right. And so, like I said, thank you all again. Uh, 
And then if you guys got aunts or moms and dads that are supporting you that pay for the class, um, don't worry, I got your back. We're gonna show everybody how it's done. And the big, I have a, the big announcement that I have is uh, last night I got a text message from some good fellas out in Australia, and um, they're kind of like my first clients, I guess, for a discharge. And uh, I basically got rid of uh, half a under just a little bit under a half a million, uh, half a million dollars over there in Australia. I got the judgment papers and all that, and I'm just going to wait for him and when he has the free time, uh, maybe next class to get on there and share his experience and stuff and go, and I'll post the, the court order for the judgment that it was vacated and stuff like that for everybody. So everybody's got proof that they can see that half a million, you know, under a half a million, about $400,000 got discharged. <clears throat> so that was exciting. I'm really excited. Um, there's a big change going on. Big things are happening in the U.S. Um, Believe it or not, you know, Trump's doing a lot of good for everybody that's in the United States and he really wants to benefit and I wouldn't be able to do any of this stuff if, you know, Trump and these guys weren't doing what they were doing up there. And certain people in my area that allowed me to grow, you know, through traffic court and stuff like that. Um, so anyways, here we go. I'm going to briefly go over this. So if you're, if you're ever trying to plant seeds and try to bring in people into this kind of uh, new education, of how to administer and taking over your estate. This is the first document that I always show people. <clears throat> it's a very easy read. It's a t you know, you can see it's a you know PowerPoint almost. It's called for those of us with thick skulls. And this is always something that I just tell people just to read. And I say if you ever want to talk about it, you know, just hit me back and we'll talk about it. So I'm just gonna I'm briefly go over this. The other stuff's better. So I'm just gonna briefly go over this stuff with you guys. And then, so in the beginning there's this dirt da 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 da. God makes man from dirt in Genesis to, uh, until then return ground. So you come from this earth, right? So what this basically is explaining, what that means is anything man made, like money, concept, time, concept, you can't serve, you can't be a slave under it, you can't be under it. You're a master to it. <laughs> That's all that means. So any man, like man made laws, statutes, ordinances, codes, they're, they're attacking the estate. And the estate was made for your benefit. That's what the SESTA case is all made for your benefit. Now, within that trust, because you didn't create the SESTA K trust, what the state created was your, your straw man account, your trade name, et cetera. And at 18, you're supposed to go in there and do this process. So when, when you, if you ever grew up and you heard people, oh, he's a trust fund baby or anything, this is the stuff that they know. And it's usually like high up CPAs, Ivy League guys, people that are high up that went to the School of Commerce and stuff like that, most likely. But the people that know this, it's, you know, it's very, very hard to find a few. But I'll tell you, it's all worth it. All worth it. And then when you want to get in fully spiritually developed and you want to start buying your cars, creating your businesses, it's all just lines of credit and doing secured transactions. Secured parties do secured transactions. Secure transactions in UCC Article 9. If you want to start going over it, I'm going to have a class on UCC Article 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 9. We're going to have, I'm going to go through the whole UCC with you guys. The whole thing. I'm going to have all them classes, 25 apiece. And like I said, if you pay for the class, loyal <clears throat> we'll write them, keep all your emails who paid, and we're going to set up a time lot, you know, 20, 25 minutes. I go, it's, it's not, I'm just saying 20, 25 minutes because that's usually a lot. <clears throat> it's a lot of time, believe me. We talk to somebody for 20, 25 minutes, and it's just straight, you know, good, good sauce. It's a long time. And we'll get a lot of done and a lot accomplished within that 20, 25 minutes. So keep on going, guys. Chris, da 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 da. All right. And this is going over the birth certificate and what happened when you were born and how your dad didn't sign it and how your dad doesn't have control over the estate and your mom just signed it as the informant. Oh, hold on. I got a text. Someone needs a password. All right. There. Okay. So... So the company then took the application and then pledged your future labor. That's why it's always when you're in court, it's, it's performance. 
they want you to perform. And then when we're defaulting them, we want them to perform. When we're appointing them for trustee, because right now they're, they're taking the role as beneficiary and the executor and you're a trustee and you have to perform in court or in the bank. They want your performance on the securities. And you have to know how to do special deposits and take control over your collateral. It's all collateral. Anything with your name on it, it's your collateral. It's your property. Your signature, your all capital letter name, that's your property. So when they tell, that's what the future labor is, a guarantee of payment for the bankers, also known as the International Monetary Fund. The bankers gave the company a credit for your application against the amount that the company owed the banks, which at the time of your birth was close to $1 million. This trans see, I don't know how true this is. Sometimes some people say they, they took out what whatever your weight was in gold. I've read a bunch of different stuff, but I just believe that at the end you put a hundred million dollar um on um, value to your certificates. I think that that's pretty much the threshold because once they start trading your certificates um internationally, you know, I mean that's getting into the trillions. I have a gentleman down in Brooklyn, I just that I have one of my good friends, they did a Freedom of Information Act on their master file and got all their Q-sips and see what was being traded on for the last three years. And it was 3.2 billion a piece <clears throat> each year. So we're gonna put in a crazy claim and see what happens. Um, really, really excited about that. And I'll just keep moving on. So uh, this, like I said, I don't really wanna go over this. This is just some first document to plant a seed and you know, your family's head or your friend's heads or whatever. And this goes over just more of titles, like your certificate of title, it compares it to the birth certificate titles. Uh, this will get into UCC Article 9, to your secure transaction. You're going to be putting a security interest into your birth certificate. That will be another class, probably the next one. Um, like I said, that's not that important for us at the moment. But it gets into, like I said, it's layman term stuff. Uh, just tell them to read it as that, not to be go crazy, crazy into it, but just let them read it one time. And if they want to have a conversation with you about it, cool. But I'll give it to you guys. I've went over it before and I'll go and get to the good stuff. All right. Okay. So this is what you guys want, right? You guys want an authenticated birth certificate like this. Boom. I actually got two of them. I got the new CIA guy that's the new um, department or the Secretary of State. So I got Rex and then on my COLB I had to get the new guy because they, they let Rex go when I was in the middle of sending my other stuff out. So I was like, I had to go redo the paperwork because I had Rex's name on it. Anyways, this is the end result. This is the fully authenticated birth certificate. So we'll start with step one. Um, I'll show you my beginning one. This is it. Oh, uh, hotel. Okay, so this is my original original birth certificate. This is where I. This is what you started off with. This is ten bucks. You go down to your county where you're born. You say I need a birth certificate. There's the first seal gets stamped on it. Um, whatever county you were born in. I was born in New Hartford. So this is where you started off with. This is the birth certificate. Then you go down and see your county clerk. And she will notarize your birth certificate. And this is the second seal. Okay, so now you have two seals. Seals are very important in admiralty law and in commerce. So then you go see your second, and I'm gonna go over the verbiage, I'm just gonna go over the, what the steps look like and how your birth certificate should look like. And they have a rivet, uh, this was stapled, they didn't put a rivet in there, they just stapled this one. So this is the county, you go there and you say, um, I'll, I'll go over it. So I went to the county clerk and I said, hello, I'm just here, I need to um, get my birth certificate notarized, I'm authenticating it, and this is in accordance to Minnesota Rule 220. And all she said, she said, okay, that's fine. And she took it, she notarized it, gave it back to me, five bucks, out, see you later. Then once you do that, you have to go to your state where you were born and type in Google uh, apostille form, state of da blah, blah, blah. So this 
So for me, it was New York. I think it's like a DS11. Don't quote me on But you just type in uh, apostille or authenticate state, da 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 da. And so let me see. I should go over that and not leave that out. This up here. All right, so I typed in New York, a PASTYLE PDF. I clicked on a PASTYLE certification. So this is after you get it cert notarized from your county. And here you go. <clears throat> so when it comes to the country documents will be used in, this is where you look up your Hague. And I'm going to give you a, uh, I use I used Taiwan. Some people have trouble using Taiwan on them, but I will go with Jamaica. I'm going to give you a, a website that goes over all the uh, non hay countries. So the country will be the non hay and then number of one, requester's name, you just put your name. Uh, it doesn't matter about your all cat name or lowercase name, none of that. Because in the system, your lowercase name is nowhere to be found. It's all, it's all capital letters. The creditor's all cap letter name. It's just last name, first name, middle. And then Gene talks about the name change. So when people get the name changes, that's the name change. That's the estate name, last name, first name, middle. That's the private name. Last name, comma, first name, comma, middle. So here you can put your private name, doesn't matter, for the, believe me. Okay, so name of firm or organization, uh, of, uh, name of firm slash organization, if applicable, but not applicable, and a address, just put your care of address, doesn't matter. Phone number, your email address, one document is $10 due, apostille, our certificates here in New York. Everywhere else, it's like two dollars, three dollars. New York, ten bucks. Certificates are, are Connecticut's got some crazy thing. Um, or I believe it's like sixty dollars or something. Um, and then for of uh, so up here, here I'll type this in. Sorry, Jamaica. One requester's name. The EX, um, and I'm not looking at the messages. So if you have questions, wait till after, and Laura will, if Laura, if you could check the messages every now and then and write one down and see who has a question, because it's going to throw me off if I look at the um, messages and stuff. Okay. Thank you. If the EX, <clears throat> yeah, it just stands for executor or executrix if you're a female. Uh, And then if you use a debit card and just fill out your debit card information, I go to the post office and just grab a money order. Um, okay, so then now this is, so when you get down to the type return mail, so it's a self, you're gonna have to, you're gonna do a self-addressed first class envelope with posters. So what that means is when once you send it to, for them to apostile your certificate, if you don't give them an envelope and the good and the the right amount of postage for them to mail your certificate back they're not going to mail it back for you so when you're mailing it off always remember you have to put in another envelope 
so they can mail it back to you with postage on it. And that's all that means. And then down here, it's just for the department of use only. And on here, this is where I, this is where I come in, I handwrite my letter. And I, I just say, dear, L, 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 um, for example, dear Mr. Tillerson, it's an honor to be writing you today. Um, uh, this is what I'm authenticating it. Uh, It's an honor writing you today. I'm respectfully requesting that you authenticate my certificate in accordance to Minnesota Rule 220. Thank you very much. This letter was written in good faith. Thank you and have a great day. And I just sign my name. And that's it. I keep it short, sweet, simple. And that's it. And I put in that I respectfully request. So whenever you're talking to clerks or anybody and you're trying to get your information, just tell them that you're respectfully requesting. And if they, if they deny that, then they say, all right, well, now I'm demanding it. And then after you get it back from the state, it's going to have the two seals, and then this is going to be your cover. This is what New York cover look like. And they'll have a gold little rivet in there. And that's bonding. Bonding code. Okay. And here's another seal. So each seal gets higher, county, state, federal. Your end seal, when you have your living will, you go see your coroner and you get the, de the coroner seal. Word. All right, so now you get it back from uh, your secretary of state and it's a postile. So now you want to fully authenticate it um, federally and the address will be in Virginia. Um, I'll I'll post it. I'll um and I'll send it out in a mass email. It's not to Washington D.C. anymore. It's an address in Virginia. So if you do send it like express mail to Virginia, they they what they do for you is overnight it to Virginia and then they send it back. Virginia will send it back to. Um. And for the federal, that form will be called DS form forty one ninety four. So you go to your search. PDF. Boom. Sauce. Okay. Now we're now we're going to the big boys, sending our stuff out federally. And then after this, I'm going to get into the why. And then I'll take questions for like a half an hour. So we got, probably, I'm going to, class probably be like for another hour or so. All right. So, boom, right off the bat. Federal form shows your name. Look, last name, first name, middle, commas. Showing you right off bat, joint, boom, private name, holla. Here we go. Okay, a lot of people put USA there. No, there are. Right here is where it goes. United States of America. Care. That's gonna be your care of address. Fuck is writing on the screen, man. And write out, write out your state. So if it was North Dakota, write out North, don't abbreviate it here. The reason I put my zip code in brackets is because it leaves me out the federal zone, leaves me out of jurisdiction, I'm not yeah. using their zip code as a federal, to tell them that I'm in their federal zone. I'm, a, I'm around that area. 
That's all that means when you put it in there. And Admiralty Lodge, box, anything in the, anything in the four corner rule, you can't consider it. And that's when I talk to people about court. And I say, if you have the overview view, you have two sets of boxes in the bar. Once you pass the bar, you board the ship. Then on the side, you got the jury in a box and you witness stand in the box and none, none of it could be considered. It's all a pony show. A court, I'll, go, I'll have a court class. I'll be in our class. That'll be a good one. All right. Section two. All right. So this is where you um, tell them what carrier you're using, UPS, FedEx, USPS. Um, you're going to do, I use it just a self-addressed on a stamped envelope. Um, certified mail number. Same address as before, above. All right, now down here, this is where you're gonna use your Hague country. One, and then they got it for you right here, boom. So there's your form, DS form 4194, document type. You're authenticating it, and it already has the option for you for birth certificate. Step one, baby, authenticate it. It's a security. We'll get into it. Um, and then when, I think it's $8. Pretty sure it's eight bucks um, to authenticate it. And then last name, first name, etc. Email. And send it off. And this is what you get back. Full faith and credit. Now you're backed. Not fully. You gotta set the trust up and then you have to deposit your security into the trust and charge your trust, your UCC contract trust. That's your estate within the SESTA key. And then you take it over from the state and you become the executor and beneficiary. You want to be a beneficiary. Security, or you want, this is the, the titles you want to sell them. Grantor, beneficiary, executor, lien holder, entitlement holder, and, set, and that's it. That's where you want to stay in that, those lanes right there. Don't budge. Grantor, lien holder, entitlement holder, beneficiary. All right, so I'll get into the other reason and we'll get into what the birth certificate is. And we'll get into, this one's a good one. Right here. All right, the birth certificate is the primary document used to enslave us all. Not only does it grant the state the right to take our children whenever they want, it is registered as security at the uh, DTC, Depository Trust Company, and used by the government as surety for public debt. In other words, they can tax the person named on the document into oblivion to pay, uh, pay back federal debt under the democracy as long as we keep registering our children with the state. They have an endless supply of slaves to tax for fiscal sins. The details of this process are too involved to place here, but the points of this are a major step to regain your freedom uh, to, is to regain birth title as opposed to birth certificate of title. So what you have is receipts, the real titles in DC, and they'll have your landmarks, your footmarks, and they'll have the bottom of your feet, which is your soul. And the Vatican bought your, that paper and it has your soul on it. So when you say the Vatican bought your soul, that's what they mean. And you're born into bondage. So I know all, most of you must have heard Jordan Maxwell when he talks about how a birth, how a ship comes into its birth, and when it comes into another country, it has to produce a manifest of destiny. How much products and how much of the goods is coming into this, you know, corporation, United States corporation, how much is coming in. So when you were born and you come in through your mother's birth and you come through her, when her water breaks, your product, when you don't use your head, you're, a, you're, you're just cattle to them, you're a human resource. 
That's why when you talk to Masons, they talk about riding the goat. They're not in the reptilian stems, uh, reptilian part of the brain. They're in the higher brain, the higher frequencies. They're riding the goat, climb the grease pole, they say. They're not animalistic. The people that run this world are righteous, righteous people. And the stuff that you see on TV with all that pedophilia, that shit is real too. But they don't run the world. That's just all puppeteer shit. So the first paragraph and the way that I look at it is he has a fear point of view on what's really going on. <clears throat> all this is set up for your benefit. Um, so whether or not you signed up with the state or you created a uh, patent of nativity um, at birth, it doesn't matter. Everything is set up for your benefit. Nobody's trying to take over your life or use you or because it's your own responsibility and do your own due diligence and know the laws. Well, it was every man's responsibility to know the laws to protect his family. But the girls are running the game now pretty much, so the girls have to learn the law too now. So what follows is painless, jail-free, non-confrontational, lawful process to reclaim the status of holder in due course to the title to you. And this gets into Minnesota Rule 220 and all the other states I've examined. Only the laws of nature relating to the birth registration process are hidden. For the most part, all you can find is a blurb on the Department of Vital Statistics webpage to affect the birth registration began in 1917. If we find the roadmap in one state, it should end as a part of all. All right, the uh, Minnesota Rule 220 birth certificates. The Registrar of Titles authorized to receive for registration of memorials upon any outstanding certificate of title, an official birth certificate pertaining to a registered owner named in said certificate of title showing the date of birth of said registered owner, providing that is attached to said birth certificate and affidavit of affiant who states that he or she is familiar with the facts recited stating the party named in said birth certificate is the same party as one of the owners named in the said certificate of title. And that thereafter, the registrar of titles shall treat said registered owner as having attained an age of majority, maturity, at a date of 18 years after the date of birth shown by said certificate. So they let, once you get 18, just they expect you to come in and start administrating your estate, taking it over, authenticating it, and start creating and <clears throat> stimulating the economy, they say to you. <clears throat> All right, so what is this saying? Your birth certificate is a certificate of title just like your car. You have the right to use the name, but the state has legal title and controlling interest in the property. You, uh, let me, I read that wrong. You have the right to use the name, but the state has legal title and controlling interest in the property, which is you. Learn to associate the name with your our physical self from kindergarten on, never realizing we're just using the name that's, the state owns. So what that what that's trying to say is okay, it goes back to the Pharaoh and the Hebrew and the Israelites when he to went to go out there and told them to make uh bricks without straw, right? And what that means is go go do business without your trade name. So what they do to us in kindergarten when they do the roll call, you raise your hand and you grow into that name and you start believing that name to be you. It's almost like an alter ego, that all cap letter name. So your first spiritual growth is having to realize that that all cap letter name is not you at all. It's a fiction. It's a corporation. It's an estate. It's a corpse. That's why when you go into cemeteries, it's an all cap. All, the, the last name's in all cap letters because it's dead. All right. Now, this is where it gets good, and this is what I'm talking about, secure transactions and having a security interest in your promissory notes, have a security interest in the VIN number, have a security interest in um, bank account, have a security interest. It's all secure transactions and admiralty law. Whoever has the highest security interest has control. You're a holder in due course. Once you put the lien on it, UCC1. You take constructive control over it 
and you have to give them notice of who you're doing business with. Everything's done in good faith. And when I tell you, you got to read UCC Article 7, the documents of title, um, boss, it goes into negotiable bills of lading, non-negotiable bills of lading. The state holds title by mere presumption in the fact that you have never claimed it. Your mama gave it to them and you haven't gotten it back. So how can you get your title back without a big confrontation at vital statistics? Looking at UCC Article 9-311, subsection A, UCC 9 deals with securities. It, it doesn't. UCC Article 8 deals with securities. <clears throat> this deals with security interests. We see that uh, the statute that could get us access to the original title without confrontation. UCC Article 9311, perfection of security interests and property subject to certain statutes, regulations, and treaties. Subsection A, security interests subject to other law, except as otherwise provided in the subsection D, the filing of a financing statement, a lien. Hmm. And then you got them agents in them groups trying to tell you not to file financing statements. That's why I get kicked out of all them groups. I just call the agents out. And then when people really don't like when I start giving the truth, you guys, I don't know. I got some conversations I should post on there with some of the group administers, administers that they call themselves. But anyways, <clears throat> that's why you don't see it. no arguing in my group. It's just all truthful, all experiences, results, especially Roger O. We got Roger O knows what he's doing too. Um, there's a few cats out there. Jay Waddell knows what's good. Uh, Ali Taj knows what's good. A um, few chicks out there. I can't remember all your guys' names. I remember faces and, and pictures. Um, but there's a few cats out there that are really into it. And I like always having meetings of the minds with them and sharing, you know, experience with them. It's always a, it's always a blessing. <clears throat> so, again, anyways, except as otherwise provided in subsection D, the filing of a financing statement, a lien, is not necessary or effective to perfect the security interest and property subject to statute, regulation, or treaty of the United States whose requirements for a security interest obtaining property priority over the rights of a lien creditor with respect to the property preempt section 9310A. Uh, list any statute covering automobiles, trailers, mobile homes, boats, farm tractors, or the like which provides for a security interest to be indicated on a certificate of title as condition or result of perfection and any uniform commercial code central filing statute or three three a a statute of another jurisdiction which provides for a security interest to be indicated on a certificate of title as a condition or result of the security interest obtaining priority over the rights of a lien creditor with respect to the property So what the first paragraph says when it's not necessary, what the means is what's what's giving you the security interest is your security agreement. But the UCC is how you put the lien on it. The security interest is your security agreement. The lien comes from the UCC one financing statement and the verbiage in the collateral section. And the affidavit and notice of lien section, blah, blah, blah. Title 28 USC code. I'm not going to read all this. It's quite boring. But this is a good one. first word on authentic auth authentications and certification certificate certifications. Authentication is used to verify the authenticity of the notary's signature and thereby the authenticity of the document. For all states that have not signed on to the Hague Convention Treaty certification and apostles do the same thing for countries that are signatory, signatories to the Hague Treaty. Court clerks may try to get you to settle a certifi certification instead of authentication. But remember, we need properly authenticated copies. 
And I was telling, I just always bring up Minnesota Rule 220. And I haven't had any pushback. Uh, the only thing I had pushback was is Florida doesn't bond after you do like when, after you send to the Secretary of State and you apostle it with Florida, they don't put the rivet in. Everybody else puts a rivet in or a stapler or something. They just leave it loose. So that was confusing. But everybody else has a rivet in there. Florida was weird. Uh, all right. So this is bit, now that goes over in the steps that we just went over going over the pictures and stuff. And it goes over DS Form 194. It'll go over again how to go over everything. Here's more statutes involved, etc. Easy. This is all crimes are commercial whenever you see that code. A little, um, for some vocabulary. And then I like this one. I like this read right here. This one's a good one. Oh, all right, so this is what I wanted to get to. This is the same one, but it's in, um, was this text, I think? Okay, so www.hcch.net forward slash en forward slash home. That's where you can, like, where you see me put Jamaica in on the forums. This is where you can list the other countries. If you have family outside of the country, you can see if they're, you can um, apostate in their country. It's just to do business there, really. Um, okay. This is the structure of your birth certificate that we're going to get into a little bit. This is a certificate is paper establishing an ownership claim. Barron's Dictionary to term registration of birth began in 915. We just read it. It said 1917. <laughs> the, uh, by the bureaus of census with all state adopting the practice by 33 which when they took all the gold and silver out of the economy because they wanted to make Everybody unlimited. Not everybody can walk around with 200 tons of gold to become wealthy. So what they did once they took the gold and silver out of the economy and you can't pay for anything lawfully with gold or silver, everybody has, everybody became unlimited. You've always been unlimited. Always. But the private side is unlimited. The public side is where there's restrictions, laws, codes, ordinances, etc. The private side, you're unlimited. You create your own credit. Um, people always ask me about the monthly bills. I don't do monthly bills. I don't do any of the ACH or TDA stuff because in the minor accounts, I get all that stuff. But if you're a true secure party creditor, um, I know creditor, they don't get monthly bills. So their lights, they're, they bond the company and identify them. And I believe I'm going to have Sean um, come on class. And he's, he's, Sean is a guy that reads for Gene. He goes down and helps Gene unpack, um, helps Gene with class. He's always in class, helps Gene read. Very, 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 very smart cat. Very smart cat. Like everybody that talks to him is like, wow, this dude's overly smart. And um, he's one of the lads. I don't want to put too much information on him like that. Um, he's He knows how to set up your account so you don't have to pay it monthly and it's prepaid. And his, um, his lights are on. They've been on for two years. No bills. So I'll have him in class. I'm actually flying out to L.A., and I'm going to meet Gene, my mentor, Gene Keating, um, June 15th to the 18th. So I'm really excited about that. Overexcited, losing sleep excited. Um, you know, growing up, I had like, you know, basketball stars and football stars, and I've seen everybody, um, music stars and stuff like that, but you never got to ha I never got to hang out with them. So it's, this is big for me, and I'm very excited, and I, I just can't wait to sit down and just hang out with him and talk about life. Um, 
Birth and marriage certificates are a form of securities called warehouse receipts. Here we go. The items included on a warehouse receipt as described in UCC Article 7, uh, Section 202 of the Uniform Commercial Code, the law in which uh, governs commercial paper and transactions, which parallel a birth or marriage certificates are, the location of the warehouse where the goods are stored, where you were born, the date the issue of the receipt, uh, the consecutive uh, number of the receipt found on the back of the front of certificates, usually in the red numbers, that's your private. Um, I'm, I want to say that the red numbers have to be your Q-SIPs. It's got to be your, something to do with your Q-SIPs. But I'm, I'm with a guy um, that's into the Q-SIPs. He knows how to search them. He's helped me set up my account in Bloomberg and shit. Um, So what he basically has been telling me about QSIPs and how securities are traded and how to find a value. And you got to have a security broker. You really do because they have all the access and they know all the accounts and the programs and they have all the access and, you know, they have their own little click. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, but it's nothing you can't read. So in that one book that I posted with the, how to deal with the security brokers, I mean, it goes into some real depth stuff. I only read two chapters into it, but there are some real good chapters. I'll repost it. Um, and then I uh, ordered the book accounting for dummies and it's got nine books in it and it goes over the simple stuff and then it goes into dividend payout because what a uh, class that I'm going to have is I'm going to teach you how to default and then I'm going to show you how to lodge the security and get paid a dividend. That'll be a couple, I mean, not, not anytime soon, but like maybe like a week or two. I'll, I'll go into that maybe two, three weeks. I'll show you guys how to do that. Cause I have a couple people that got a couple people in default. So they wait for me to come over there and show them how to do it. So I'll be flying in soon to show them. <clears throat> uh, a description of the goods or the packages containing them. Oh, name, sex, birth, date of birth, et cetera. And then the signature of the warehouseman, uh, which may be uh, by his authorized agent, municipal clerk or state registrar signature. Uh, birth slash marriage certificates now appear to uh, at least qualify as warehouse receipts under the Uniform Commercial Code. Uh, warehouse receipt, which is considered a document of title, may be a negotiable instrument and is often used for financing with inventory as security. Voila! So would that explain to you that your birth certificate is a document of title and then once authenticated, proper verbiage, it becomes a security uh, which you can negotiate. You see what I'm saying? Since, all, uh, since the U.S. went bankrupt in 1933, all new money has been borrowed into existence. All states started issuing serial number certificates, warehouse receipts for births, uh, births and marriages in order to pledge us as collateral against those loans and municipal bonds taken out with the Federal Reserve Banks. Uh, the full faith and credit of the American people is said to be that, which back the nation's debt. Okay, so the nation's debt, well, we're trillions of dollars in debt and everybody wants to know who that we owe. We don't owe anybody. What that is, is all the, all the money in that the American uh, nationals or you, you could be a, Basically us, it's all the money that we left out on the table that we need to go in and claim. That's what the, that's what the debt is. That's what they're showing. That's how backwards and that when they say everything's reversed, that's what, you're not in debt and we don't owe anybody. That's the money and security that's all left on the table from generations. We don't owe anybody. Thought you guys were sovereigns. <laughs> Let me stop. But yeah, that's what debt is, or the national debt. That's all unclaimed security. That's all it is. So you know, I, I mean, I've had some emails talking about people going to pay the debt, or I'm here to pay my part. I don't get none of that. I don't get none of that. Pay what?
Governmental assignment of a dollar value uh, to the heads of citizens began on July 14th, 1862, when President Lincoln offered 6% interest bearing bonds to states who freed their slaves on a per head basis. The emancipation didn't free, it was a transfer of property south to the north. That's all that was. Nobody got freed. Anybody with a birth certificate is not freed until you've authenticated it, leaned on it, secured it. And then once you've secured it, then you're, and you're the entitlement holder. And then you're entitled to the benefits because you're the beneficiary because this was all set up for your benefit. But they try everybody and they have their tricks. But having just a state of mind, been there a couple of times. And then federal children, um, you guys can read that. And it gets into human resources. And then if you guys seen some of my posts where, uh, where I say that you guys are, are, we're all human cattle, IRS Dakota Manual 6209, it's because we're, we're just human resources. If you're not using your head creating and stimulating the economy, you know, think about, I mean, look at, every, look at everybody in America. Everybody's drugged up between the foods. Uh, your kid can't pay attention to school, so they, you know, oh, this guy can't, he's got ADHD, he needs a pill, or it's just crazy. Everybody's, everybody is everywhere. And then, I mean, Trump signing bills to bring in other medical relief, which means people could start, you know, for treating depression with mushrooms. I mean, if you're depressed, you have a vitamin B deficiency. I will get into sun gazing. Check your diet. Raw vegan, plant-based diet, plant-based medicine. I'm not good to quote in the Bible. I know it's in Genesis where God said he left every seed and every herb for us, right? Okay, her ear is all torn up again. Are you saying All right. In 1923, a suit was brought against federal officials charged with the administration of the Maternity Act, who were citizens of another state, to enjoin them from enforcing it, wherein the plaintiff averred to that the act was unconstitutional and that its purpose was to induce the states to yield sovereign rights reserved by them through the federal constitution's 10th amendment and not granted to the federal government and that the burden of the appropriations falls unequally upon the several states held that as the statute does not require the plaintiff to do or yield anything as no burden is imposed by it other than that of taxation. which falls not on the state, but on her inhabitants who are within the federal as well as the state taxing power. The complaint resolves down to the marked contention that Congress has uh, usurped reserved powers of the states by mere enactment of the statute. Though nothing has been or is to be done under without their consent, Commonwealth of Massachusetts versus Mellon, Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Mr. Alexander Lincoln, Assistant Attorney General, argued, argued for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to wit, I, the act is unconstitutional. It purports to vest its agencies of the federal government powers which are almost wholly undefined in matters relating to maternity and infancy and to authorize appropriations of federal funds for the purpose of the act. Many examples may be given and were stated in uh, debates on the bill in Congress of regulations which may be imposed under the act. The forced registration of pregnancy, governmental uh, prenatal examination of expectant mothers, restrictions of the right of woman to secure the services of a midwife or physician of her own selection are measures to which the people of the state which accepted provisions may be subjected. 
there is nothing which prohibits the payment of subsidies out of the federal appropriations. Insurance of mothers may be made compulsory. The teaching of birth control and physical inspection of persons about to marry may be required. By Section 4 of the Act, Children's Bureau is given all necessary powers to cooperate with the state agency's administration of the Act. Hence, it is given the power to assist in the enforcement of the plan submitted to it. And for that purpose, by its agents, to go into several states and to do those acts for which the plan submitted may provide. As to what those plans shall provide, the final arbiters are the Bureau and the Board. The fact that it was considered necessary in explicit terms to preserve from invasion by federal officials the right of the parent to the custody and care of his child and the, sanct, uh, the sanctity and role of his home shows how far reaching are the powers which were intended to be granted by the act. So what that's basically saying is you register your kids, you rate the, the st uh, state helped you raise them, and then when it comes time to if they get in trouble, they could just take them from you. Or if you don't, if they feel you're not a fit father or mother, and they feel that their property is in danger, they'll come take your kids. That's what CPS is. Because you don't own your kids because you get the, the state owns them. And then this just goes over cases, and you guys can go into. Then, um, all right, Laurel, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to open it up for questions, and anybody that has any questions, they can. I don't know how to unmute them. You have to unmute them. Up. <laughs> I'm going to unmute, but everybody needs to check around themselves and make sure that it's not too noisy so we can hear everyone. <laughs> Oh, I didn't find no keys. I got these from Dad. Okay, unmute yourself if you'd like to talk and ask a question. What's the difference between a postal so there was that authentication and a regular authentication? It's not even a service. Go ahead, PJ. All right, you can hear me? Yeah. All right. So the difference, the distinguishment between them, the state apostles it and federally authenticates it. The difference between apostille and authenticate, I'd have to look it up. But I apostilled it. I asked for an apostille at the state, and then I authenticated it federally in Virginia. So by doing that, you can work internationally and nationally with Correct. commerce gotcha yeah. okay <clears throat> and thank then, you so next class i'll go over the security agreement so next class we're gonna put a sec all right no hold on we got uh, mute everybody i gotta go over something i forgot something okay okay all right you can hear me yeah okay all right so now once it's fully authenticated you have to put an affidavit of ownership over it. And then you go to FedEx or get, and then you get that um, bonded. They'll put it together for you.
or you have to do put if you have a, if you know somebody that can put a rivet in for you, go get it riveted. You'll see when you get it all authenticated. Um, so yeah, after you authenticate it, that's this is when you after it's fully authenticated. Next class, what I'm going to go over, I'm going to go over the security interest, and I'm going to go over the verbiage you put on it that makes your so, uh, your receipt, your authenticated receipt into a security. Because you have to have it after, when you bring, okay, so the reason, all right, so the reason for, here's the main reason why you're authenticating your birth certificates. At the end game, you're going to lodge all your securities which will be your birth certificate, certificate of live birth, your landmark title, which is your original title, where DC has, or the original, or the regional archbishop. Um, and what you do is you have a security broker, open account at Fidelity, Chase, uh, Wells Fargo is big time. Um, I would stick to those three. Fidelity, Wells Fargo, Chase, and uh, Marilyn Lynch. Um, you get a security broker and you need a wealth manager at the end game once everything is authenticated, secured, uh, trust set up, $100 billion BC order, identified for $100 billion, which would be your insurance, um, international bill of exchange, and you want your trust charged <clears throat> so when you when you're going out there creating contracts, documents of title, and doing secure transactions, when you go to um, do special deposits, etc., wire transfers, etc., letters of credit, etc., I'll go into all this stuff. Um, the end game is to you'll get a dividend payout on a hundred million, and people call it the treasury card, and it's real. I know people that got them. Gene's got one. Um, another guy in his class has one. Um, so it's uh, that's your end game. Because if you go to banks, to all the banks, they all have unlimited credit cards there. And it's all your estate name. And I can have a class on banking and go over how they don't lend money and, you know, and stuff like that. Um, email email um, PJP for types of classes that you want, and I'll put the class together. If you want to have like a procedural class, I could put that together. If you want a um, another discharge class, I'll do another discharge class, or I'll take a student, and then if they're all full, if like if there's a secure party creditor and they got their trust set up in here and you want to discharge some, I'll have a class and we'll discharge her live, step by step. Um, but again, the main the the main reason for the affidavit is at, at the end game, you're to have the affidavit of ownership. So that's all yours. And you'll be the entitlement holder through your security interest and you'll be the lien holder through the UCC one. So what that means is because you have the highest security interest and the highest lien, you'll have an ag lien. You're, you control that estate. You're holder in due course. You're the beneficiary of the estate. You're the entitlement holder, grantor, et cetera. Um, I know a guy that took his birth certificate down to the county, paid his taxes for seven years. Then tell him his birth certificate, said, here, I want to pay my taxes, seven years, land tax. And I got the proof. I'll, put, I'll probably have a class on that, too. Um, we can have, yeah, I can have classes on anything, but I think we should go in order with the UCC after this in the security agreement. I'll get into use the sales, and then we'll end up UCC Article 9 with secure transactions. And after that class, in between those classes, I'll have a creditor class and I haven't decided how I want to do it for you that don't have your trust set up. I want to make it cheap so everybody can and afford it. <clears throat> um, Cause I charge five grand, but I think I'm going to have a class for, you know, maybe 600 or $500. And I'll have like, it'll probably be like a two week class, a real creditor class. It'll be two weeks longer. Um, I haven't. I just haven't decided how I want to market it yet. That's all. But end game, you guys are gonna know how to. You guys will have a secure bank account. You guys will have um, security account set up. Your birth certificates will be authenticated. We'll go over all the forms. You'll 
Um, I'll teach you court. I'll teach you how to discharge. I'll teach you how to recoup. I'll teach you all this stuff. I've done it all. I got the proof. I got the testimonials. I got the judgments. I got it all. The only thing I haven't done was create my own money. And that's what I'm about to do right now. And I'm going to record it all. Um, so what I mean with secure bank accounts is you don't want to, you're going to be getting an 82, which is an estate number. And then you're going to want a foreign estate number, not a foreign grantor's trust, but a foreign estate number, which is a 98 as well. But, and you want to be the executor and set it up for treasury banking. All right. So I'll give you a little sauce. All right. So a secure transaction, you ready? You go to the dealership. Um, get the VIN number, talk to them, tell them that you're going to get them a letter of credit. Um, you need a purchase agreement. Do your banker's acceptance on the purchase agreement. Put it, uh, do, a sec do a commercial security agreement on the purchase agreement. Put, place all that on a UCC1, take control of the collateral. Bring that into your bank and negotiate that with your UCC1 and security agreement, but your bank account has to be open with a 98 number, 82 WA Ben, and you have to be, you have to have gone through probate and getting the title of personal representative or ex executor, beneficiary, administrator, et cetera. And I have all them steps. I could have a class on that too. Um, the steps, all right, so the probate, the steps are in a book called Wills, Estates, and Trusts by Alexander A. Bove. And that's where it's, it's a step-by-step -step one through 10 and it shows you how to do it to get, go through probate and get those titles. And again, it's uh, estates, wills, and trusts by Alexander A. Bove. Great book. Easy read too. Great, great book. Um, so back to the secure transaction. When you're creating your promissory and then, okay, so when you, I just got done reading UCC article seven and part of the secure transaction was, it was part of the end of the book and it goes into, you have to authenticate the security agreement. And I never knew that. And I never even heard anybody talk about it. Um, so your security interest in the purchase agreement and place that on the UCC one. Then you want, when you're, when you go to negotiate with the bank, you tell the bank that you're going to do a special deposit. And this is where you're going to create your promissory note through UCC Article 3 and the Unicidual Convention on International Bills of Exchange. And I'm going to go over it after I do mine. So I'm going to buy a Bugatti. And I'm going to buy my dad a boat this week, next week, when I get back. Um, you can have anything you want in this world if you work for it. And like I said, creditors do secure transactions. So once you... Uh, once you're at the bank and you want a letter of credit, you tell them you're going to do a special deposit into the trust. And it's a promissory note. On the back side of your promissory note is a set off bond. And then you indemnify it. You insure the transaction with an indemnity bond and assign everything to the CFO of the bank. You get your receipt, UCC, you know, you get your trust receipt once you make your special deposit. Once you get your receipt, they issue the letter of credit. You bring your receipt to the dealership, the, the airplane or the airport or the, wherever the hell you buy jets, uh, real estate, that's it. That's a secure transaction. And at closing, so if you're getting a house, anybody that bought a house, when you went, when you closed, was the bank there? Nope. What the bank did was set up a trust and made themselves the beneficiary and made you a non-disclosed third party to a, an investment loan, pretty much. And what you did was leave your security, your mortgage, your death grip, your security abandoned. And I know how to go in there, reclaim your security, get paid 65% back. Um, I'm stopping foreclosures right now. Um, so I'll have the judgments on them pretty soon. Um, that'll be another notch under my belt. Federal indictment. Um, traffic court. Traffic court's a waste of time. Um, but I'll have a class on it. You can learn a lot through a small... Uh, it's not a waste of time, but to do all this paperwork for like a seatbelt ticket, it doesn't have to be done. I can show you how to work court. 
just have to have, um, I'm, I tell people your security agreement and your UCC1 are the, the two most important documents you can really hold besides your birth certificate. Um, I'm going to authenticate my social security card. I want to see what they do with that because that's a security as well. Uh, baptismal certificate, uh, do a patent of activity, life claim. These are all certificates. And then the verbiage that you put on them to make them into a security would be your special deposit for special purposes for SESA K uses. And the notes become, once you register them on the UCC, they become securities. So it might say no, but once registered on the UCC, they become a security and then are governed by UCC Article 8. Um, that's crazy, man. I know some of you guys got some more questions, man. Don't be shy because you're going to help other people out and you're just going to, it, it benefits people when you ask questions. But for the apostate and authenticated, the difference, I don't know what the difference is really. Hey, I mean, Pito. yeah. All right, let me bust that for you. All right. Okay. Apostille is an additional or an annotation made in the margin of a writing. An authentication in the law of evidence, the act or mode of giving authority, legal authenticity to a statute, record, or other written instrument, or a certificate or certified copy thereof, so as to render it legally admissible in evidence. Verification of judgments. An attestation made by a proper officer by which he certifies that a record is in due form of law and that the person who certifies it is the officer appointed to do so. Acts done with the view of causing an instrument to be known and identified. So also see verification. Now, in that, apostille is bullshit. And everybody keeps talking about Apostille. Apostille is only good if you're going state to state in here, blah, 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 you know, going through there, which we call it. Authentication makes it authentic. What we have did, I went and got a copy of the DMV record. And I have a copy of the, um, the, the original COV. I took that, got it notarized, okay? I got a certified copy from the state. I got it notarized. And then I got it authenticated, all right? So what I'm going to do is throw a, a thing on top of that of acceptance and ownership of the COV. Plus, I got a duplicate of it. Now, on top of that, this just happened this week, okay? I had an old case. And basically, the VA was trying to take my money. So what ended up happening is, um, I've been for seven years fighting this thing. Contacted the uh, clerk of court uh -huh. and, and requested a certified copy. All right, so the VA was trying to take my money because they said I had a warrant. In the record, they sent me three pieces of paper. There was no warrant and there's no uh, affidavit for a warrant. Okay? Yep. So I have a certified copy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that certified copy and send that into the uh, state of Pennsylvania or Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to get that authenticated there. And now it becomes an original record. And it's some very interesting stuff that happened because this, this happened back, back in 1998. But the bottom line is, is this. What I did is I wrote out affidavit, which I'm probably going to take that and get that um, notarized and authenticated the place right. that into the record of the VA because right. basically the VA is saying there's a warrant. The court doesn't have a record of a warrant. So anything to that, and I saw when you post you posted something up and you wrote kind of you kind of wrote by it. And I don't know if you meant to, to ride over it, but I saw Rule 44, which is important. Rule 44, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure. And Rule 27, Federal Criminal Rules of Procedure, line up with the same thing that states that, in fact, that's one of the things I used uh, on them. Proving a record um, 
And when you go into this authentication, you go back and you listen to what it says. It says, in the law of evidence, right. an act or mode of giving authority or legal authenticity to a statute, a record, or any other written instrument, or a certified copy thereof, so as to render it legally admissible in evidence. Uh, verifications and judgments, attestations, so forth and so on. Right, so right. basically, when you go in, and I know, I think there's two states, California, and there's another, another state, I forget which two they are, but they no longer do authentications. They only do apostilles, okay? But the authentication, what do you want? Something that has a margin note in writing, or do you want something that is authentic? We want to make the record authentic. And that's the difference between an apostille and an and a, uh, uh, apostille and a, um, blah, 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 blah. authentication. I'm sorry, yes. <laughs> awesome. awesome, great explanation. So then just authenticate at the state level then? Yes. Yeah. Right? Well, well, basically, from my understanding, you're, I, I, I came on, I was in two different kind of modes when you came on. I kind of heard you say something about the, um, uh, the seals. So yeah. you want to get, the, the, more, the more the merrier. You want to get as many seals right. as you can right. on that document. Because yeah. each one is now, it's not only a seal, but it also becomes what? A witness. Yes. All right, for, 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 and I'm throwing this out here, just not as advertisement. Hopefully this is okay, Pito. Um, okay, Georgia, all right? We, our authentication, okay? Um, and we have services, we can hand deliver your documents if you want them. Our, our, our state is the only state that I know of, and I get documents from all around the country. Georgia, has when you authenticate on Georgia, uh, you get a 1776 deal, which is pre-reconstruction. But then you get the, the governor signs it, the secretary of state signs it, and the, um, sec uh, uh, the executive secretary for the state of Georgia signs it. So you got three signatures on this, on this authentication. It's the only authentication in, in the United States that I know of, that you're going to get the governor, the secretary of state, and the executive secretary for the state to sign that document. That's three witnesses. That's three witnesses on one, on one thing. Can you imagine how much weight that carries? Body weight, big weight. Big weight. Then, if you're doing your counties, and right. basically, if, okay, so if you, if you were born in New York, Okay, of course, you would have to go through your normal steps of getting your document authenticated through New York, through the county, whatever. Oh, <laughs> thanks, thanks for reminding me. Okay, so to order it, you, you go on vitalcheck.com, and you can get your certificate of live birth there. You order your long form and short form on vitalcheck.com. Okay, so once you get that authenticated in those two, if you want, you can send us... And my name is G Penn. I'm in the group. If you want information on how, how to help you authenticate here in Georgia, we'll be glad to do it. Um, we do hundreds of people's documents every, every year. Um, but basically, what you would do is you would send a cop, you would send your originals to us. We would take it to our notary, and they would make an attestation. If you remember when I, when I read out the, the, the definition, yeah. it yeah. talked about an attestation. We make an attestated copy of your original documents, okay? Yep. And then we would take it and take it to the court uh, that our notary is at and get an acknowledgement for her because this is how it works. No, in I think she may have. She may, may have. <laughs> All right. Um, they'll they'll uh, acknowledge that she's a notary. So that's that's two seals you got right there, and then we take it to. Um, the Secretary of State, and you'll get that seal there. So that's three plus the, the other two you got. Then if you want, I wouldn't suggest this, but if you want, if you want to go federal, fine. 
But one of the things, and I'm going to share this with you, Pedo. This is this this will probably help you with your thinking. Okay, whoever's on top is controlling. Right. That's why you put the affidavit on top. Well, what I'm, okay. What I'm saying, as far as uh, uh, authentications, whoever's on top, and and if I hear what you're saying, okay. So here's what you would have to do. Because if you put the affidavit on top after an authentication, you void the, you void the authentication. No, it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trust me. Trust me, bro. I already Trust have mine recorded with the registrars. And I already, I already <laughs> right, 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 right. But listen to what I'm saying, okay? I hear if, what you're saying. All right. If you, avoid anything. you put an affidavit of ownership of it, that takes control over it. If you put it on top, meaning that you're stapling it on top, no, you rivet it or you bond it. Okay. All right. So by doing so, you have thus altered that document and it's now un it's not authenticated anymore. It's authenticated because it's now you all, all you do is you put an affidavit over it. Okay. Authentic if, authentication. On top of the authentication. Is right. uh, is that what I hear you saying? You're putting an affidavit that it's authenticated. Okay, but are you putting it over top of the authentication? Absolutely. Right. You have just voided the document. It's not voided. <laughs> it is. Trust me. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me let me read this to you. Let me read this. And this is off of my authentication. Okay. Uh, let me find it. Okay. It's an uh, asterisk. For the contents of the annex document, the department assumes no responsibility. This certificate is not valid if it has been removed or altered in any way whatsoever. That's what it says on the on on this is US and and it goes with any authenticated document. If you alter that document in any way, it is now void. Trust me. I do this all day long. I'm in there talking to the Secretary of State all day long. If, you, if you're going to do it, the best way to do it is have that, have, that, um, have that put on there when you're doing your authentication with the notary or when you're doing it with the notary. Gotcha. I think that's the best way to do it. Okay. Because I had I had I had a I had a guy, uh, in fact one of the uh, uh, one of the guys at the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. I questioned him on this, and he said he had a document that went to China, and because there was a pen mark, somebody accidentally put a pen mark on the cover, yeah. it went accepted. Yeah, I hear you. So I no awesome man, it's awesome information. I really appreciate it. That's awesome. Thank you. No problem. You my experience and i've done it to 10 other people like 15 other people now so i'm just going with what i can replicate you know yeah i agree but but for me i mean for i mean for your regulations in georgia i mean i really appreciate that there's a few people here in georgia that's really going to help a lot of people out and exactly. i hope you up for it man yeah but the the point of it is, is this it, it, it it's not just for georgia it's anywhere you go if that thing is altered if they take in fact when i took the uh papers from the court to the va he was trying to take them apart. I said, no, you can't take <laughs> it apart. You need to copy it with a staple because that's a certified copy. If you take that apart, no, it won't. They won't know. Ooh, that's mine. That belongs to me. So you need to copy it. And the only reason I did that is because I had left out the house. I went to the post office. I happened to be there. I was on my way to Atlanta anyway to right. drop off an authentication. So I didn't have time to copy. Gotcha. gotcha. No, that's awesome. Awesome stuff. Great stuff, man. Great testimonial. Love it. Appreciate thank it. You. <clears throat> Is anybody also, else? also uh, thanks for your help in uh, us uh, discharging our car. Yeah. What um uh what are you going through in the VA or what what what's going on? Well, basically, I had a gun charge back in 1998. Uh -huh. That's how far ago this was. Yeah. Basically, they didn't find out about it until 2011. At that time, the warrant had been squashed. And um, basically, what ended up happening is they're trying to take my VA, VA money because they said I was a fleeing felon. Right. And yeah. I wasn't entitled to the money. 
So, so you have a court case going? I don't have a court case going. Court, court, it's been res- the the case with the gun has been resolved. Okay. Uh, for some period of time, it's just the VA. They're they're saying it was a warrant, and with the information I received this week, the court record has three documents, and no warrant is in that official file. Okay. Right. No bill of complaint. Well, there's a bill of complaint for the original gun charge. Okay. But there's no complaint or no affidavit or no warrant for my arrest after. Oh, fact. Right. What were they trying to do? They're trying to say that you have an active warrant. Exactly, because the warrant, the warrant division says I have a warrant. All right. So contact the warrant division, send an affidavit to them, and saying. Uh, if you can't, um, if you can't produce a warrant within ten days, then you owe me a hundred thousand dollars, and then they they won't answer you. Then you default them. Right. Okay. But you take the default uh, affidavit of put the affidavit on the default UCC one lien on the default. The default becomes security. Open the brokerage account, lodge it. You get a dividend payout. Gotcha. That's what you do with defaults, and I'll have a class on that. Thanks. I mean, I got one girl that had a judge in de- on default. I met her out in L.A., and that was a crazy meeting. Um, she ended up following my advice and opening up an account at Fidelity and getting a dividend payout for us uh, for a year straight. I'm not going to go into the amount. It's a pretty damn good amount, but, um, yeah, she, she defaulted a judge, took uh, put the UCC1, put the lien on it, lodged their security, and got the dividend payout. Awesome. Yep. It's, everything's happening. Everybody's has, just got to do your due diligence. You're going to grow into it. Um, I'm never going to lead you in the wrong direction. Everything that I speak to is through experience and what I've done and what I've done for other people, what I can replicate. Um, but it's all coming. Like I said, I just discharged under just a little bit under half a million. And that was in Australia. That already makes me international. You see how this thing goes? Um, discharging. The discharge is your private administrative procedure. So what you want to do is you exhaust your private administrative remedies, right? So people always get them for the, the default. Then like, they didn't respond or they didn't do anything. And they just ignored me. Well, that's, that's what you want. The, the, that's a tactic of, of silence of acquiescence. They're in agreement. They're not rebutting what you're sending in. So when you default them, now you have them for, because you need to, what you're defaulting them for is performance. They owe you performance. So when they're, they don't perform, like when we do in court, when we don't perform as executive trustee, we're in breach. We're in breach of trust. Now we're in default and they default us. And they, now we place our, instead of placing indemnity bond and bond the case and do a special deposit on the, the um, traffic numbers or the criminal case numbers and do a special deposit and do a special deposit on the judge's oath or his bar number and bond everything, insure the case. Nope. Everybody says, no, nope. uh, they, they, they just put their body up or hire a, a Hire a lawyer. I don't, I'm not going to talk bad about them because the lawyers only know procedure. They don't know the law. And I think that's why most of them are like they, most of them have drug problems because they're watching people go to jail. And some of them are actually really trying. They're actually good people. Cause I've, I mean, I've had a few conversations with them. I really had a, didn't like any of them for a long period, but most of them, you know, I've had real conversations with them and they say, we don't know any of this stuff. And I'm like, Oh shit. And I mean, I've talked to, I mean, these guys are 50, 55 years old, been in, been, you know, lawyering, attorney in for 30 something years. Um, again, with the discharge. Okay. So we're at the non-performance part. Now we have from, from breach. Now that they're in breach, ooh, they're bringing in a, if they bring in a complaint or they say, are they foreclosing or they, you owe something. This is where your counterclaim comes in. Federal Rules of Civil Procedure Rule 13. It's a mandatory counterclaim. What kind of claim is it? It's an adverse claim. Where's the adverse claim defined? UCC Article 8-102. 
It tells you how to do the adverse claim and your entitlement rights in UCC Article 8-505 through 508. So once you have the non-performance, now they're in breach of trust. This is where you create your constructive trust, your counterclaim, but your bill of complaint and equity. You go to the uh, attorney general, do a criminal complaint, go to Title 18, and start rack charging them up. Rack them up. <laughs> rack them up. They do it to us. And at the end of the day, it's business. You don't have to go after judges or cops. You have to forgive your trespassers because you're going to be trying and you're gonna get like a, a lot of the times when you start filing this stuff, you'll get like a little traffic ticket or, or like a, a failure to stop. And they're gonna test you and they wanna see what you know. Or you might be a criminal and uh, you got a, I know guys that got $560,000 from the recoupment, $1.2 million from the recoupment. And the IRS came, and the IRS came back and took it. They didn't take his voice, but they took it. And then they sent another statement back saying, here, this is how much you owe. And it was the statement that he just recouped. But because he hired somebody to do his recoupment and didn't learn how to do it for himself and his mentor didn't teach him how to fish and left him abandoned, his bank account got seized. And all he had to do was he was being tested. All he had to do was do another recoupment, another tax assessment. That's what your discharge is. That's what recoupment is. It's a tax return. It's a tax assessment. You're assessing your tax. It's nothing you owe. You can't owe anything because it's an assessment of your estate. And it's all set up for your benefit. And that's when you, they talk about the state operates and how you are. Everybody's backwards. Everybody's trying to uh, slave for worthless securities and, and pay for something that's already prepaid. And that's where everybody's getting stuck. You can have a regular nine to five a job, be happy and making 50 or $40,000 a year. If everything is paid $40,000, you can do a lot of shit. I'm just, you know, everybody has different goals. Um, I feel like once you know this stuff, you, you, you only want to help other people and you only want to help stimulate economies. And when you're doing things that you love, you know, you're not working. And that's what, that's how commerce will fall is you have to get everybody <laughs> on a loving frequency and helping each other and doing and following their own heart, studying themselves and following what they love to do. That, that, that's how you change it. Love kills all war. That's, it's, it's that simple. I give this shit away because I don't care about it. I hope someone takes it and I hope you market it. It's the truth. I hope you can make, if you can make money on it, good, cool, whatever. I don't care if you take this information. Like that's why I say you buy the class. I'll give you twenty five minutes of my time. The other people can have the class. But if you guys are working hard and stuff like that, I'll work with you. I'm simple, man. I come from the mud. Simple. Had nothing. Come from nothing. You know. Now I'm here, private attorney general, ambassador. I've. Uh, I've had judges recuse themselves. I never went to school. I, I mean, college. Um, I just discharged half a million dollars. You know, it's just hard work pays off, I guess, you know. And I really just, I really have a strong care and a strong love for people. And I want to see everybody produce to, the, to their best ability. I want to see you at your full potential. You know, I created a competition who could spread love and light the fastest. That's the competition you want to get in, you know, that's all. But it's all real. The discharge is real. The recoupment is real. The administration of your estate, the secure party creditor stuff is all real. Um, it's not scary. Nobody is going to come after you. Nobody's going to want to kill you. Um, just act in honor and just be a gentleman and a lady to them. That's all. They'll, they'll help you out. Believe me, I don't got the brightest past. I promise you that. And they help me out. You know, um, I'll tell you this from the books that I've read, the history of and how the courts were created, it's all for human development. Heaven has a strong bed and you want to you want to be free. You're going to have to be tried. And that's cool. Try me. You just, it's not like, you know what I mean? Try me. Cool. I owe you something. Sure. How do I pay? 
where's my signature? I'm selling my signature for $10,000 uh, each page. You gotta learn how to contract. And you can't give the, you know what I mean? It's all pagan in there, these courts, these banks. It's a pony show. They tried to, you know, it's all, it's all mental. But once you get over the fiction and you know how to administer your estate and um, settle, your, settle the estate, discharge your um, debt, debt, sin, same thing. Um, your, your whole life is going to change because up until now, all you've known is debt tour. You didn't know how to act as a creditor. It's a totally different thinking. It's a, a totally different reality. It's a totally different operation. It's a totally different routine. Um, but by the end of this course and by the end that I'm done, you guys are all going to be multi-billionaires. I promise you that. You guys are going to be buying whatever you want, doing whatever you want, spreading love and light. It's just, gonna, it's just a, a high-frequency thing. Coming back to the light bodies, that's all. But... Some this UCC it, all this stuff is fairly new stuff. You know what I mean? It's you know, I was yelling at my dad like, "Why weren't you studying this stuff or know this stuff?" I mean, it's kind of new. You know? uh, Peter, yeah. sorry, sorry to interrupt you, man. I, I I wanted to hear you talk, but I I'm also at work and I don't want to get myself in trouble here. But I had a question. Go ahead. Bro. Um, I had um two questions. Uh, one one issue, one question. The question is, uh, I already got my first of authenticated i got them through the uh, vital statistics in pennsylvania okay. um but it's been indicated to me that you need to have the actual col be the long form in order for it to be truly val uh, valid and of value once it's been authenticated um so from what i've been able to determine the only place to obtain a copy of the long form birth certificate uh is from the federal court in pennsylvania but they don't. But the but the the process is hidden in so far as how you can get it. I I have a friend who has a friend who went and they they jerked him around. This kid knew what he was doing. He had to go print something off, and I think he's almost completely private now. He won't he won't give nothing up. Right. So you know he won't tell. There was just one piece of paper he had to bring to them to prove that he knew what he was doing, kind of thing. And and he, and a half hour later, he walked out of the courthouse with his with his long form. That's fine. I'll send you in with a security agreement and UCC one. You'll walk out with it. All right. Well, um, I, go ahead. Man. Yeah, um, I'm from PA too, bro. And I attempted to get my certificate of uh, live birth. Uh -huh. And they sent me back a thing stating that uh, they do not give it out. Um, either it has to be 100 years um, past when you're deceased or whatever, because it's a, a public record or, or something to that effect. Yeah, yeah, and and I I I now know that that's BS um, because because uh, second granted it's secondhand, uh, but but this kid was able to get a hold of his his long form, um, but he like I, got, I said I he's not sharing people. with anybody. I got two people in Pennsylvania right now. They got their long form, so I'll call them after the class and then I'll put the procedure up for you. Just hit me up. All right, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Second thing, um, I I just had a court hearing yesterday. Uh, where you know i went in i i i, I did the the uh, a basic ucc one uh put in the affidavit a special appearance and okay. uh and, and called into question the uh the, the judge's bond uh okay. demanded that that he provide of uh, and i also uh filed all that on the local uh on the local record wow. um and sent cool. copies to both the uh um the attorney general uh, federal attorney general and to the governor awesome. now uh at at the hearing they didn't acknowledge that but what happened was uh the lawyer that showed up was not the lawyer that brought the case it was okay. someone else right i didn't i didn't find that out until the end of the everything was all said and done and uh, i immediately said hold on you're not you know i said you're not part of this law firm and he said no i'm not uh, but I, but I'm, I'm representing Capital One, and you know I'm, I'm here on their behalf, and I'm, just, I'm like, but hold on, you're not part, you're not, the, not part of the law firm, nor are you the lawyer specifically who brought this case. That's all. That's awesome. Okay, but see what you, what they're getting you in is an argumentative. They're getting to a belligerent manner. Oh yeah, no, I, 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 I didn't let them get me there. Uh, I just, I, I brought it up. As soon as they start talking, if you're there, you shouldn't even be there. Um, I'll show you how to close this out. But if you do go, well, there, I got, I got a, I got a, um, the judge, I think got scared because 
they already put a, um, a judgment in with, uh, with zero dollars for the plaintiff. It was a judgment for the plaintiff with zero dollars. Awesome. Okay, so, what so I would, is when I'm in that kind of situation where somebody's coming in for a bank or representing a bank, um, I automatically object. And I just say, Your Honor, you know, federal, do, federal Rules of Civil Procedure Rule 12B2, this court lasts subject matter jurisdiction. This guy's not given any factual testimony on the record, and he can't represent a dead man. Yeah. I, motion this, I motion this court to dismiss. See you later. Business is done. And if you have a security agreement, UCC1 in the case, you bond the case with the indemnity bond, you demand your Q-SIPs. Because they're, what they're doing is they, they, it doesn't matter that you're paying out. They just want to create a security in your estate name and underwrite it. You see what I'm saying? Yes. yes. So well, I know how to get the Q-SIPs. And we'll get your Q-SIPs, see what it's being traded on, and put a claim in. The claim is a 1041. The reports are your 1099s. So your business transaction is your 1099A. The 1099A, Bs, and Cs run your bank. So your 1099A is your acquisition or an abandonment. Um, mm -hmm. So, so the, the, uh, your bank, so if you're filling out a credit card application, the application is a security that has an account number associated with it. You would call, right. an, you would call the underwriter, get the account number associated with it, fill out 1099A, and acquire the asset you left abandoned. Do a special deposit. I mean, I'll go over it all with you. We'll have a talk. We'll have a call. All right. All right. Cool. Um, I, w I was uh, the guy that that engaged you a little longer when I made my payment, saying thank you for the for getting this all together. Yeah. Awesome, man. I really appreciate it. It's an honor to uh, talk to you, dude. It really is. I, I, yeah. I, I really appreciate what you're doing. Uh, a lot of people out there talking talking a lot of stuff, but not a lot of people doing a lot of help for a lot of people. Uh, so, you know, e even this, a little, this little bit that you're doing is, is huge, uh, compared to what's, what's generally out there. I'm just trying to start from, you know, step one, here we go. It gets, this is the most boring class that we're going to have. I, I didn't really have that much paperwork to go over. You know I mean? Other stuff with discharges, I'll be able to show you everything step by step. We'll go over everything. It'll be fun. Yo, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Okay, this is Aaron, and I'm using Aaron? my voice. Hey, um, I I I just retired from the military, uh, and I live on uh, Fort Bragg military installation. Um, my car was impounded um, March fifth um, for driver's license and registration expired. Mm -hmm. What I've I've since found out is that um, the gate guards are actually contractors that are instructing the soldiers who are on the gates to write the tickets and the tickets go to the u.s district court right and um none of it is is legal which i you know based on my research i know it's not legal but what what it's costing is that not only did he adjudicate the what happened on the street he cost me two thousand dollars and it doesn't it's not so much that it was me but that it seems like this is a racket oh okay. yeah it's called a kickback racket so um first of all and thank you for your service um my intent is to is to go through this process i'm still dealing with i'm this. trying to tell you what i could do for you and okay. what, how we'll resolve everything um, you have a you have a security that you left abandoned for if you had a loan for the car that we could claim. You're an injured party, so once you're a secure party creditor, now we can do a restitution, a tort, a maritime tort claim. And then if you want a new car, I'll show you how to do a secure transaction. Once you're once everything is set up, I'll get you a new car. <laughs> I really my intent is is to get this so that it, it also helps the other soldiers because it not only um put me at a disadvantage well, if you wanted to set something up where i mentored you we can work on that and then you can start mentoring other soldiers okay okay yeah and then i'll get like i said i'll get with you um after this class get with laura we'll set up a date with you and then we'll get this going with you okay okay all right thank you for being oh i appreciate it and thank you for uh your testimony Thanks. Hi, I have a question. Shoot it. This is T Rice. T Rice, what's good? How are you? I'm good. I'm great. Good. Thank you, first of all, for holding the class. And my question is 
uh, I guess a comment. I have been in probably about three different groups and I've been doing this for almost a year, not uh, constantly, you know, on and off. So I have a lot of documents done, but I'm not sure if they're properly done because you know how somebody will start helping us in one group and then they'll stop and then you go to another group. So we, you know, it's kind of like that. So I've, I've done the UCCs, I've done the authentications, I've done the, you know, the basic stuff, but I've got documents notarized. I have not sent, uh, I did my uh, paperwork for uh, Steve Mnuchin. You know, I've done those things, but I haven't actually just sent everything off like I need to because I'm not sure it's properly done. So I was holding off on that. Awesome. So I guess I'll make sure that I, and it was never in any order. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why, I, like, I you're starting that. over from the beginning. I'm like, cool, because it was never like one, two, three, four, five, six. It was just for here, there, and everywhere. Okay. So I just kind of worked with what I had because it was all right. foreign to me. Right. So I guess that's what I need to make sure all of my ducks are in line. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. Um, okay. For your secure party paperwork, it's your security agreement goes first on UCC one after all your birth certificates are authenticated. Uh, you do a common law copyright and a hold harmless indemnity agreement, uh, mm -hmm. reservation of rights, affidavit of reservation of rights, um, Affidavit of secured party creditor, affidavit of foreign status, affidavit of tax exempt status, uh, affidavit of peaceful inhabitants, uh, or, uh, peaceful inhabitor, I'm sorry, uh, affidavit of, uh, there's one more, there's one more, I always forget this one, but anyways, and then you get into the IRS form, okay, so then you get, then you create your bonds, your BC bond order for 100 billion, international bill of exchange, your cover letters, Mm -hmm. um, then you register the bonds on a UCC3 with your registered mail numbers, mm -hmm. assign it to Raul Maldonado. You want to send everything to Puerto Rico because once you send everything to Puerto Rico, that'll make you international. Okay. And that's so the, do you, you, the documents that you uh, say I need, they're in the files or, or are you going to help us with that? I'm gonna help, they're in the files and I'll help you with all that stuff. Okay. Okay. And you have my, I'll give you my templates. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so when you say about if we needed a mentor, so do you think I need you to mentor me? Of course. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it'd be an honor. I mean, it's, it's, I take it, it's, when I do this, it's a, it's a high responsibility for me because, you know what I mean? I'm, it's, it's life changing. Right. Spiritual growing. I want to make sure it's done right. You know what I mean? So, but some people get mixed up in mentoring. Like they think I'm just going to hand them stuff. Mentoring. Right. He's like, I'm going to tell you what book to read. I'll get you right. the free books. There's nothing you're going to have to buy. Right. Uh, okay. Go over this. We'll go over that. And then because you're, you're going to, I'm teaching you to fish. If right. I don't teach you to fish, then it's a waste. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not in it for the money. Right. I don't give a shit less about money. Um, so it's all about just, you know, teaching you guys how to fish. Okay. And I just give you my experience and what I've gone through and what I messed up with and what works. Right. Like, and like from being in jeans class, once I got to jeans class, um that gave me my you know my affirmation that all right i know what i'm doing it gave me my confidence that all right here we go i can start helping people out and i think that's where i, I want to get to that point where i know what i'm doing you know and i want to help people and i don't want to charge people because it nobody's charged me so it's like i just want to help people just like you are not on the masses that you are because you're you're helping a lot of people you know but just on a small like family friends or something like that but I can't help them if I don't know, you know, what to tell them verbatim, you know. If we all know how to do this correctly, the volume and the mass that we can create in our effect is incredible. It's going to happen. It's Absolutely. Gonna, they're not going to stop it. There's nothing to stop. You know? Well, it's not even about them stopping it. It's about us being where we should be. Right. And not even worrying about them because once we're just handling our own business and we're doing what we got to do and we're helping each other and we're creating our own uh, republic and our own community and our, our own country and our own, you know, our community, they, right. don't, they don't care about that if we're not threatening what they're doing. Absolutely. Right. Because at the top, I mean, what they do is once you have your 98s and everything set up, you have three people, you start just paying each other. Right. So 
You know what I mean? You just start doing special deposits in each other's trust. Okay. You know, and that's when we get to a point where money doesn't even matter anymore. Exactly. <laughs> that's when we all want to go where it doesn't even matter what some costs because we're not money. There's no exchange of money. It's just a shifting of a title. Okay. That's what, exactly. But that's why in court I tell people if they say you owe some, pay them. It's just it's you're unlimited, so it does you can pay them as much as you want. Retire. Right. It's just learning how to pay them. Retire early. Right. Get out of here. You know. And, right. You're unlimited. There's nothing to fight over. The it's vast out there. You know, the wisdom is out there. The templates are out there. Right, because they send me like um, tax papers from 2000. I know it's probably 2009 up until now, and I've been paying taxes since 2002. Well, so, I'll teach you how to do the. See what Jeans just got it into, but my buddy did it already. Was he found out how to get the Q-sips that are internationally traded? That's where you're a multi-millionaire, maybe a billionaire overnight. And that's okay. where you know I mean? you're gone. All right. You're gone. You know what I mean? That's, okay. And I'm about to put that claim in. And I'm, I'm, crying. I'm losing sleep over it. Anil, you, you must have already I, done I'm, that. I'm about to lose sleep just from you saying that. I'm like, right. because I see the numbers and I'm like, ah, it's just numbers. <laughs> Don't try to attach it to you. You know what I mean? Don't try to attach the number to your temple. So I'm right. just trying to keep it as, you know, it's just a fiction anyways. But it's crazy, you know? Mm. But um, it's all real. It's all done. <laughs> it's just got to be done proper and in the proper procedure in the proper form. Right. It's all going to be out for you. I can't wait. Oh, and so I want to thank Laurel for being so patient with me. Yeah. She's the Laurel's bomb. The best. I'm lucky with Laurel. I wouldn't be able to do this stuff without her. She keeps me organized. Oh, she's she's keeping you straight. You got a good one there. Yeah. yeah. You guys are all you guys are all welcome. All welcome. We're here to help you. Thank you. Know, you. We're sick and tired of the guruism and all this crap going on where nobody's getting helped, everybody's confused. Right. Okay, I have a question. All right. <laughs> Listo. Um, hey, how you doing? I'm great. I miss you from last class. I know, I'm sorry. I just been so busy. I'm overwhelmed with these cases. No, I said I missed you. Oh, okay. That's all. I've been fighting some cases for my three children. Um, the police basically came in my house and like illegally uh, arrested my daughter. She's uh, se she's 17 now. And I'm just trying to get, because you know I took the last class and I've been trying to handle it on the other side, but I think I want to go more on the private side now because the judge, he's giving me a hard time about it, recusing himself on my son's case. My son's been objecting to the uh, information uh, based on the criminal codes of procedure because it's not valid. The officer can't oath another officer. And the judge is basically now basically just putting in a plea of not guilty for my son, which is what I was trying not to have him to do because he's only 19 and he's going pro se. And no, I'm trying to teach him. Never pro se. We're going to have to talk, man. Yeah, so, but that's what I'm saying. When you're dealing with things on the other side, it's kind of, you know, a little bit more confusing. But when you're on the private side, I just need to learn how to, uh, how to properly teach, teach my son because he's 19 and I can't speak for him. So, okay, um, so what, we're, what, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to begin the creditor process for him, get a security agreement in there and a UCC1 so he becomes the entitlement holder. Then we're going to put an order in to remove it from the municipal building into a district court. And that's in accordance to Title 28, United States Code, Section 1333. Title 28? I'm writing this down. USC, Section 1333. Section. And you'll have the recording, too, if you miss anything. Yeah, so I can go back. Okay, Section 1333. Absolutely. Okay, and then. So we remove that, that, and then we'll remove, we're going to remove it for uh, lack of subject matter jurisdiction and um, Federal Rules of Civil Procedure Rule 12B6, uh, state of claim which relief can be granted. Since no relief can be granted, it has to be removed. Then once you get it removed, uh, we'll gather the QCIPs that they're uh, trying to underwrite on the estate and we'll put the claim in. We'll do a special deposit on the judge's oath um, if the judge puts in a plea, you always object and you say, that's practicing objection. That's practicing law from the bench. Entering a plea is my job, not yours. So if, if you ever in, in that situation, if a judge is entering a plea and you have not consented to him entering a plea, because when he's entering a plea of not guilty, he's putting you in automatic dishonor. 
I really just wanted to go after his buns and just be like, okay. <laughs> you don't need to because you don't need to. I hear, I know you do. Believe me, when I when I got kidnapped and I got pulled yanked out of my out of the car, I wanted to go after the whole city. When I had, my, I mean, I had my security agreement, my UCC one filed. It blew my mind. I think they pulled me out because I'm like, I'm good. Paperwork got me. You know what I mean? Nope, doped me up. They don't care right, about the same thing. Just happened to me, and I'm dealing oh. with that in Colorado right now. It's like, you know what? I'm going after everybody, but you have to forgive your trespassers. Okay. They don't know what they're doing. You know what I mean? Right. Okay. But let's still get paid. <laughs> yeah. um, right. So, but you're unlimited. Once you have control of your estate, and you and you know how to get paid from court, you'll have a different attitude towards it. Okay, so I have to get the birth certificate authenticated and do all of that stuff, or mm -hmm. first? Yes, 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 yep. Start that, and then we'll go over next class. I think is a good time to go over the security agreement. Yes, that is that. Those vital components that you named the security agreement. Um, yeah. the all that stuff and I'll make sure everybody has a proper understanding and comprehension on everything before we move forward. If you don't have an understanding or comprehension, ask the questions. If you, you know what I mean? That's how you learn. That's the only way to learn. And then everything is just repetitious. Everything's repetitious afterwards. It's a, it's a new language. It's a new, it's, you get, it's just the same way you learned in school. It's just repetitive. It'll get repetitive. But we, we do the order removal, do a notice of removal. We'll, we'll do a Freedom of Information Act to get the QSIP numbers, take it to the brokerage account, take it to the security broker, see what's being traded on, put the claim in, lodge security. And what's the time frame for this, for all of this stuff? Because, you know, they're trying to, like, take him to trial and do all this creepy crap. Yeah, see, they take their sweet-ass time with everything else, but when you know what they're doing, all of a sudden they want a speedy trial and crap, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, the... The main thing you want to get in is your security agreement, UCC1, and get the process of authenticating the birth certificate in. I'll go over court with you. I'll give you my templates. Me and Laura will get your templates set up so you can go in as a sui juris and a claimant. Um, I've been putting intervener on there. They don't like that. Um, they called some of my shit frivolous and it pissed me off. Oh, he wouldn't even let me approach the bench, like, with my son. He told me I didn't have a right to be up there because I'm not. He's like, well, first of all, he told him. He's nothing but a public trustee. Uh, no, don't go there, bro. Hold on. Um, <laughs> don't say that. Don't go there. Just say, <laughs> just say uh, Your Honor, I'm here as friend witnesses counsel um, to the, my son. Uh, he's he's here as sui juris. He's here to um, he here he's here as the authorized representative, um, personal representative of the estate. We're requiring the, the court to please produce the international uh, treaty that's in dispute here because it's a commercial claim due to admiralty because there's no injured party or else it would be a tort claim. Um, we would just like you to produce the uh, international treaty in dispute. If no international treaty can be disputed, then I motion this court for uh, dismissal due to lack of subject matter jurisdiction. International treaty, okay. Yeah, international treaty and dispute, that's that's your admiralty law. That's your military tribunal. That's why they call you Mr. and Mrs. and they try to play that game. Under the War Powers Act, right? Yes, yes. All right. I yes, remember. and if you talk to people in the Army or that been in the Army, they'll get in, uh, there's a certain field manual that they go by, and that's how they, the cops deal with you. Everything's, it's all martial law. That's why you, you got to get that, Aaron. Let's try to find that in the group. My buddy's got the book. I, it's it's. What's field. it called? Ah, oh, man, I should. I, I'll email him because my buddy Pat, he's about okay. to get deal. He's gonna get out. Uh, if you shoot me that, I I can uh, go download it for the group. Okay. I'm gonna well, look for it now, actually. <clears throat> yeah, there's a certain feed mail, fan, uh, certain field manual that makes that when they're arresting us or approaching us, uh, if we act in a belligerent manner, that gives them the authority from the corporation standpoint to. Uh, seize the, the uh, seize the the property. Right. That's what that's what they go by. Because when I was helping my buddy down in the special forces, when I only had five days, and he walked himself in count, that shit is still fucking. Let me um, excuse my lens. Um, uh, he's about to get out on our appeal. So we sent uh, the people that I was talking to. When you're going through appeal, it takes three times. So the first two times that my appeal was denied, the uh, Laura will tell you this. Um, it was for um, the wrong address. We didn't send it to the right address, but it was the right address. Um, and the second one was I didn't have the correct font and spacing between the font and like how the numbers go on this up and down the side of the document. Yeah, yeah. They denied your document because you didn't have that. That's what that's that's what it got sent back for. And then they accepted the third one. So now 
<clears throat> I just got an email from him. A CEO came up to his cage and said, hey, we're transferring you. Um, this is part of the appeal, and, and he's going to testify the guy that set him up. The, so what happened with Pat was he was going through a foreclosure. He hired a guy that, I mean, completely derailed him, fraudulent everything, put fraudulent liens on judges, clerks, district attorney. I mean, fraudulent. The liens weren't even correct. Um, Damn. Yeah. <clears throat> and so – Pat got a 13-year bid, and that's when he contacted me. I was out in Missouri, and it was five days before sentencing. And I went down there, and we reversed all the paperwork, got most of it in. Um, there was an FBI guy there. It was a Monday morning. There was an FBI guy there in court with his kids, um, three lard-ass sheriffs that, my, I mean, Pat could have, with his pinky, could have took out. And uh, the prosecuting attorney, uh, Mr. Evans, which – and the detective. So after they, they got Pat, helped them build the case on the guy that got Pat. So the judge said his statement and he and, uh, called the state attorney up and the state attorney came in and both said that Pat wasn't the guy that filed the liens, yada, yada, yada. So Pat started talking and, missed, and then the judge interrupted him a little bit. And then they gave him the new offer of three years. So he looked back at me and I'm trying to tell him, Accepted for value, accepted for value. All charges are accepted for, for value in accordance to federal rules of civil procedure, uh, rule eight. Uh, all you got to say value and all, blah, blah, blah. all charges are accepted for value and consideration in accordance to federal rules of civil procedure, rule eight. Okay, that's one for everybody to remember right there. That's it. <clears throat> and you say that three times. Right. And then all you say is, hey, my man hasn't shown me the OID over here. We're in a taxable termination because you're administrating my estate without my consent. And if you want to act as the executor, Your Honor, then I'm going to file a 1099A for the assessment of the fines. So whatever you're getting fined for. and um, you, They pay you that? Right. This is how you, you, right, revert, this is how you, you reverse the direction of it. I'll, I'll go through court real quick. This is court. Court is, um, they're attacking your estate, right? So you go in there, you demand your Q-SIPs and that's it. If they're not, if you don't get them, then you do your notice of removal and then you put a, a bill of complaint in and you come in as a claimant and that's your counterclaim. See, there, people yes, get ran that's over. what I need to do right now. You don't have a counterclaim. Your counterclaim is mandatory. And your count, again, your claim is an adverse claim because you're dealing in securities. Here, I'll pull this up real quick. You guys, I'm tired. And, and this is and this is actual civil procedure. So you're going in an order that they're they have to accept, pretty much. Yeah. This is their okay. this is their blue rules. Uh, so you're dealing in securities when you're in court. So this this the language of special deposit for special purposes. So, all right, so <clears throat> you, get a tra you get pulled over, they give you a traffic, uh, traffic ticket, speeding ticket. That, they, there's an account number on top of the ticket. That's a, that they have a QSIP number associated with it. That's what you're going after. Yeah, yeah. As soon as they, as soon as they give you the ticket and they put you in, the, in, the, in the, the police book or whatever, boom, automatic QSIP created. Automatic. It's automatically in there. It goes right to the judge's chambers. Automatic. The clerk is public. That's the first thing they need to label that as a security. You're, you're, once you claim it and you explain, uh, you'll see my paperwork. And you okay, do a special right. deposit on the judge's bar number. That's when the judges throw everything out. Because if he, does, if he doesn't act in honor, that's when you liquidate his insurance. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? This, this guy that I'm dealing with. He's been he's been a judge for fifty eight years, dude. He's so fucking. He knows old. what you're trying to do, so I wouldn't break his balls because at I any know, time I, he set me off, and I gotta, you know, they could just go contempt and then send the goons, and then you ain't gonna be heard from for at least three to six months. You know what I mean? That's how. I mean, if, just wait, going there, I, if what happens? Say that again. If what happens, I could be in contempt. All right. So if you're there publicly, you're already dishonored. If you're already right. at a if you're already at a hearing that they told you to go to, they already control the situation. If you waited for your name to get called, you're just a you're just a cow. You're just getting you're a cow that's getting called to the slaughterhouse. That's how they look at you. You're a baby of the court. You have to have somebody to talk for you. You can't speak for yourself. That's how they look at it. So if you show up to court on their court date, you're already in dishonor. 
If you don't have an agreement, the only reason why you should be going to court is to demand your Q-tips in chambers with a judge or to get, pay, get a paycheck from the prosecutor. That's the only reason to go to court. I would enjoy going to court for once. That's the only reason to go. Because if I go to court, it's 50000 automatic. <laughs> it's automatic. I only have one life. And if you put me over without a warrant, believe me, I've been in situations now with my paperwork filed and no, I can – I can have these police officers working at Home Depot. <laughs> you no, know? <laughs> the court. Uh, it's learn you have a trust, and when if you act as a gentleman, as a lady, you're not belligerent. You're not telling them how to do right. it. Like it's just know? staying in honor. I, I just want to stay in honor with them. You know, I want to just play by the. Way. So this is this is the verbiage, right? So you go in there on an off day when they don't have court, and you say you go to the clerk and you ask for a formal meeting. You say, "Hey, I'm here by." So and so, I'm here by special appearance in a uh, in accordance to federal rules of Rule Eight E. That's your special appearance. Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, Rule Eight E. E is in Edward. Got it. Okay. So I would like a formal a formal meeting with the judge in chambers. I'm. Here. If the judge isn't there, then you request to the court clerk say, "Hey, I need my file. I dem I'm peacefully requesting my file, my QCIPs." of the court and everything needs to be released to me. I'm the entitlement holder and the lien holder. Then once you get your QCIPs, you get what they're trading on, you put your claim in. So you'll take your QCIPs, you'll put the 1099A, 1099 OID, 8281, 1096-1040V, and if you get your claim, the recoupment, this is your claim with the 1041. That's how you get paid from court. Or if you don't want to do the 1099s, you could do the OID, the A281, and IRS Form 706 if you're going to act in the executor capacity. The, the trustees are the ones that fill out the 1099s. So if you're not the exec, see, this is what you got to know your role. Is it better for us to be the executor over the trustee? It does. Reason? You have to know your role. You're always the beneficiary. It doesn't matter executor, trustee. You just have to know. You which want to role. receive. You want to be the receiver. You're the no matter what. You're the beneficiary. Right. But if they're going to act as the executor, and if you don't have your account set up, and if you haven't gone through probate, where you have control over the estate where they gave you the, the title of the executor, then you're the executive trustee, which is fine. You can be the trustee and beneficiary, but there's certain paperwork the trustee has to fill out to perform. So that's the 1099 paperwork. That's what the trustees fill out. So when you appoint the judge and the prosecutor to fill out your paperwork, and they don't, now you have them in breach and in default. And that's where the money starts flowing. So you go, So in order for us to be the executor, we'd have to go to probate. Right. And, that, and otherwise, we stay as the trustee. Right. But we can still write ourselves. Wait, can you be the trustee and the beneficiary at the same time? I didn't think you could be. Yes, yes you, you can. can. You can okay. be the trustee and the beneficiary. The trustee's job is to protect the trust. The and make money beneficiary. for the trust. Exactly. Okay. So people, okay, so there's, there's two foreign trusts and estates that people are setting up. There's a foreign grant, there's a foreign estate trust. I got that. Foreign grantor trust. The foreign grantor trust. But I don't know what that is. You're the trustee. Oh. You're, see, I have, a, your 82 is in the state, and I have a foreign estate EIN. Right. The executor and it's true i'll put my ss for when we go over it you guys need 98 you guys can have my ss4 form and it's set up for treasury banking but the use of fraud back to the court your adverse claim your so all right so boom you have a complaint you have a now you have your mandatory counterclaim which will be your bill of complaint and your counterclaim is the adverse claim which is defined 8102 tells you the entitlement rights in 805 through 508. And this is the, this, so when you hear people talking about usufruct, usufruct is how you can see the accounts payable and the accounts receivable side. So you get to see both sides of the ledger. That's how you get your set off because you, 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 you subpoena call reports because this is what I'm talking about. Up at the top, it's trust law and securities. That's what it is. And uniform commercial code and accounting. Those four is what it is when you're doing your transactions. 
trust law, trust law, tax law, UCC, and accounting. And underneath, and, and UCC covers securities. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it is at the top. Securities and trust law. So when you right. usufruct, it shows when you enforce it in your counterclaim for your adverse claim, this is how you get them to produce the accounts payable. So when you when people are like going after the banks and stuff and they have like a um a witness in there speaking for the bank, they can only see the accounts receivable side. They only see one set of books. It's up to you to know what's going on and subpoena the other set of books. That's where you get your use of fraud from. That's where you see your accounts payable side, which the judge has. And they can't deny you getting those? Hell no. Not when you're the, not when you're the creditor, the lien holder, the entitlement holder. Do you have to be the executor or, or not? It doesn't matter if you're the executor or not. You're the beneficiary. But okay. when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm talking about executor and trustee, it's only for the role of the judge and how they want to play it. And how oh, you're, oh and okay. So your options are different based on which one, right. which one you're playing. Wherever you are in your status correction. If you're oh, not okay. in status correction, you're just a trustee. But you're still the beneficiary. You just have to fill the 1099 paperwork out to get your recoupment into the, in the case. <laughs> okay, I want to bank on this one. Every, you, okay, so you you can. This is your jubilee. You can recoup your bank account. You recoup your mortgage. You recoup your student loans. You recoup because these are abandoned. Was that what you were doing in that last video that that you did? What the, your I, last the, your I, last live I, one that we went over that? The last video was a discharge, and I only went up to the default. Oh, okay. Because it was free. You feel me? Right, right, right. I just I knew that you had covered something. Uh, no, I, that was I covered a discharge. I'll go over a discharge again, and then I'll go over what you do after you get them into default, and that's what nobody teaches. And I'll show you the no. all that. Yeah, we just need to know how to get it into that situation and hold where where our position yeah. is and how to how to file the right because you know it's going to be a very similar set of paperwork for most of the situations. So getting right. the foundation paperwork understood. Then the rest of it just is like one form kind of here and there based on the situation. But there's right. a foundation that we all know that we can fish with. Okay. So that's going back to, that's like saying, I know companies that just set up the trust and that's all they do. They don't know how to sh operate the trust. And what it is after you set up your trust, it's banking. That's all it is after you're, it's all banking after that. It's foreign banking, right? Merchant banking. Merchant banking. Is that considered foreign banking? Yeah, pretty, okay. much, pretty much. Absolutely. All right. I prefer that. <laughs> I mean, all right. So I'm going to call it a night, guys. Uh, hey, man, I appreciate all, all your help with everything, man. We just I really appreciate it. Up, man. We'll all come together. It's all happening. Everybody's going to start seeing it. Once, I mean, I, shit, a half a million dollar discharge once we start getting more testimonies. <laughs> like that, it's and, uh, over, you know. You it's know, time to get on the boat and go to the island. That's, I'm that's right. where I'm at. I'm right you're, down there, you're down there in Tampa where my family's at, right? I'm up in New York right now. I'll be down in Florida in the wintertime. Yeah, my family's down in Tampa, Lakeland. Ah, I, I grew it. up there. Yeah, I grew up there for 20 years. Nice. Nice. So I come down to, I come down to visit, you know, every so often. Yeah, me too. I'm moving the family down there. No. Oh, nice. Well, when I come back down to Tampa to see my family, I'll hit you up. Fam, I'll probably see you before that. But, yeah, like I said, yeah. give me floral. Uh, I'm gonna get a, uh, we're going to set up the everybody that was in class and pay for class tonight. Um, we're going to set up a call time. And then we'll get all your stuff going. And like I said, man, uh, everybody here, man, you're on the right path. Uh, man. I'm not going to let you down. I'm going to give you everything that I have. Uh, not, I don't have any secret stuff. Uh, all my stuff that I – all my templates is free. No, you're just real, and that's what we need. We just need we just need real people to to you know. I'm authentic and simple. You know, the simplicity of it is is the great thing for me. Just keeping it simple, you know. Keep it simple, man. So Keep it simple. The better. It can't be too complex because I know when I start rambling off code, that's when people are like, "What?" The <laughs> <laughs> so, I like that. Hey, quick uh, question. 
is uh, are, are they going to send out a copy of this video? Yes. Yep. Okay, thanks. That's what I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> it takes me two or three times. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, everybody that participated with questions today, man, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming in tonight. Uh, I had fun tonight. Um, this is this is going to be the most boring class. Um, after, <laughs> after all these classes, we're going to get into some real juice. I'm going to get real uh, into it uh, quick and heavy, and we're going to start getting results for everybody. Yeah, hey, you post them. Results and remedy for everybody. All right. And uh, G, how can I get a hold of you? You can't. You can't. <laughs> no, I just I'm no. G Pen, uh, um, um, I'm in the group. G Pen, G Pen. Okay, because uh, uh, I was born in Georgia, and all my paperwork and stuff I need to do is in, I'm in Seattle, so yeah. you might be able to help me out with trying to get my state stuff done. Awesome. Yes, sir. Okay, right, yeah, just hit me up. I'm in the group. All right, brother. I appreciate all you guys' help, man. It was it was a great call, and I'm happy to see it's going to be the worst one. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Uh, good night, fellas. Everybody. Nice. Good night, everyone. Everybody. Good, night. Good, night. Good, night. good night. Thank you so much. I love you guys. Be safe. Love and love. Right. Peace, right. peace, peace, peace. Bye -bye. Peace. Good night. Good night. Hey,